Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours, and this is your Monday Minutes. Well, today I'm going to talk a little bit about using directional terms uh, in EMS, and this is important, I think, when you're describing a patient's uh, pain location or the location of an injury on a patient, especially when you're speaking to other EMS professionals, uh, healthcare professionals, doctors, nurses, and of course in your documentation. So this is pretty common knowledge stuff. Uh, I'm sure you've gone over this a few times in your EMS class, but I think it's important to sort of refresh your memory on these terms because they really can make your documentation, I think, a little easier and also much clearer for anyone reading it that is in the healthcare field. So let's just go over these real quick. And you know, directional terms are usually uh, showed as pairs, right? So front and back, in this case, um, that would be the common term, front and back, okay? But front would be the anterior or the ventral area, and that's the front of the body, the front surface of the body. And back, of course, is the posterior area or the dorsal area, the back surface of the body. Now looking at a quick picture here, you can see the anterior is the front of the body, and then if we turn this body, or this image around, the posterior would be the rear or the dorsal area of the body. Now what about right and left? Well, that's the common terms, and when we talk about the medical end of it, it's still right and left, but it's important to note that when you say right and left when describing a patient's pain or uh, injury, you're talking about the patient's right or the patient's left. Don't get it confused with your right or your left. Make sure you're relating it to the patient's right and left. So, of course, you can see here patient's right and the patient's left. So, if you're looking at a patient head-on, you know, if you're looking at their this side of their body, which would be your left, that ends up being the patient's right and vice versa. If you're looking at the front end, front arm of the body, um, or an, an, a leg or something like that, it's going to be your right side when you're looking at it, but it's going to be the actual patient's left. So if you look at the patient straight on, just think of it as being the opposite of what it is for you. So it's the patient's right and the patient's left. Now top and bottom. Well, this is superior for top and inferior for bottom. And superior is when you're talking about something that's closest to the head of the patient. And inferior is when it's closest to the feet of the patient. Looking at the picture here, you can see the arrow here, this purple arrow, right? Superior, again, you're going up towards the head. So you want to go ahead and relate something. Let's say their uh, clavicle would be superior, okay, near the head, whereas their knee would be more inferior away from the head, okay? Now, close this and far this. Now, this is a little bit similar to what we just discussed, and closest would be proximal. And when we talk about proximal, this is closest to the point of attachment to the body, and distal is when it's farthest from the point of attachment to the body. And here's the picture again, and you can see proximal and distal areas of the body on this image here. So when you talk about distal, like their distal pulses, right, would be down towards their wrist, their radial pulses, just sort of as an example. And then you have middle and side, which is also known as medial, which would be closest to the midline of the body, and then lateral, which is farthest from the midline of the body, or away from the midline. Looking at the picture, Here's a midline, this yellow arrow here, okay, and medial is as close to the middle of the body here, closest to that yellow arrow, where something that would be lateral would be away from that yellow arrow, either side of the body, right or left, but it would be away from the midline, the middle part of the body there where this yellow arrow is showing. And then in and out, right? We don't use in and out a lot in, e in EMS and when we're describing patients' pain or, or injuries, but we'll use terms like superficial, 
which would be closest to the surface of the skin, like a superficial laceration or abrasion, something like that. Or deep, which is farthest from the surface of the skin, which would be a deep laceration, let's say. It's a little hard to show that in the image because you're talking about uh, entering into the patient's skin. And that's pretty much it. Again, pretty simple terms to remember. Um, I suggest just looking over the video a couple of times. Recheck your textbook, guys. It's always good to sort of uh, remind yourself of these types of terms. I think it's going to make your documentation much clearer for other professionals. It's going to make it easier for you to document as well and avoid any confusion or relatable terms when you're using things like uh, superficial and deep versus in and out or um, you know, uh, closest and farthest and, and things like that. It's going to make it a little bit easier for you when you're using uh, the proper terms and it's going to avoid any confusion on your chart, okay, if it ever gets called into question. So I hope you can use these Monday Minutes, guys. Uh, if you have some minutes of your own, be sure to send them to me. It's jhoffman at ems-safety.com. Until next week, as always, Jim Hoffman, stay safe.